and down, but I, I found ways and and methods to just keep bu as busy as possible. And it just got busier than that. It's it's, it's maddening to be honest with you. I, I, re I truly need a vacation from my vacation. <laughs> yeah, that was, I mean that, that was one of the the, the reasons for, um, for, for for getting in touch with you was um, I, I do a lot of the uh, the album reviews for for Rock Fiend and it's right, um, right. since since your own album in in November I, it seems like every month I'm reviewing something that you're exactly. you're on in, in some kind of capacity do, do you never take a break and relax, fella? Well. It, it, this is a bit of well, out of, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword. It's it's out of necessity that for the most part, uh, sometimes it's contractual. You know, sometimes I I have to do certain things because they're, I'm obligated, and for the most part, I think the overall theme of, of everything that I put out or done recently is more therapeutical because when you think it's it certainly can be uh, it, it can mess with your head. The fact that you're you're basically sidelined and not able to do what you normally do and how you do it, etc. So this obviously replaces it in, in, as a, a sort of therapy in terms of as a, as long as I'm busy, as long as I'm doing something musically, that I, it kind of replaces the fact that I can't take it on the road, that I can't do the other aspects that I'm missing. Sure, sure, yeah, makes makes sense, and and I, I guess you're the go-to guy for a lot of people. It kind of it kind of seems like you know everybody in rock, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and I guess well, you're top of their list for for somebody to sing. And that's you know obviously it's a, a testament to the the long and hard road that I've taken in doing what I've been doing for all these years and uh, and all this time. So I guess it's a good thing in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and to be honest with you, I just. I, it's just always been in me to work hard and to to keep reaching for that brass ring. You know, it's mm -hmm. it, it's just a natural thing for me. I can't just rest on my laurels. Yeah, no, I'm never never going to knock somebody for working hard and uh, and making a career. So no, good good on you. Um, I guess it could be a bad thing. Eventually, it could be overkill. Like, oh God, this guy again. <laughs> <laughs> nah, keep working them vocal muscles. You'll be uh, yeah. you'll, you'll be good. Look after yourself. Well, um, and, and, and and strangely enough, to be honest with you, the the time off from the actual touring, because touring is what really bangs up the vocal cords. You you have the, the a day in the life of touring includes so much conversation, uh, communication, etc. Mm -hmm. At least at home when I'm doing my recordings, I, I basically I work for a few hours and I've got the luxury of kind of piping down and shutting up, not really speaking too much and not saying too much and, and having to be so social mm -hmm. on the road. You're banging your voice, you're, you're singing, you're, you're banging the voice twice as much when you're on stage because you're shouting, you're singing, you're maybe singing over the monitors, you're trying to basically make sure you're heard. And then you're talking and you, you the whole day consists of communication. So it truly is a voice killer when you're on tour more. So, so it, even uh, people have been telling me that my voice sounds better and stronger and, and even just more clarity in the past uh, few recordings that I've done pr pretty much throughout the year of 2020. Yeah, I think in one of my reviews, I, I kind of referred to you as a uh, the, the the Swiss Army knife of of vocalist because you're kind I of versatile that. and you're doing all these different kind of <laughs> kind of things. Are, are, are some things easier than others? Um, yeah, I mean overall, it, it, everything I do within everything that you, you're hearing me do is pretty much it's easy to do when I've I've got the time to do it. Mm -hmm. Again, when you when you're on the tour when you're on a tour or you're on the road, you have to succumb to the to the climate changes, the environment, the time change zones, uh, traveling, not great sleep or the sleeping conditions. And uh, you have so many things to contend with. And, and so from that, it's uh, it, it's it, it naturally can just bang you up even more. And, and I just I, I, I'm just lucky that I have as much arsenal now that I that I still do after all these years and decades of doing what I'm doing. Nice one, yeah. And then when you when you last came to see us in uh, in Scotland, it was freezing cold. Uh, yeah. You're a tall guy. You were just about scraping your head off the top of the venue and stuff. But, yeah, I as long think as you... I was actually ill at that. If I'm not mistaken, I I was ill or was getting ill because I remember even at the end of the show, I think I had to. Uh, normally the, uh, the the bus was leaving. It, we we had to cross a border or something. Something happened mm -hmm. that uh, it was going to be a very horrible night of sleep in a very early morning and i think i actually got a hotel room that night by the airport 
so I can get a good night's sleep and kind of shake it off and make myself better within the, the overnight stay. And I flew out the next morning. I believe we were going off to Europe or some somewhere where there was a, a border crossing involved. And oh, I just God. knew I would I have to get up. I'd have to interrupt my sleep and I'd have a show the next night. And I just knew that it wasn't going to be a, a good turnout if I didn't get the proper rest. So I believe I believe that was the beginning of me getting ill on that uh, on that particular run, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, sounds about right. But hey, you pulled it off, and and we really appreciate you coming. We we, we know it's not California, but we appreciate it. You, you you were here with the Sons of Apollo as well, yeah. and Motherwell, and and I think people still remember you wearing our uh, national um, football team shirt on stage years ago. Oh, which yeah. so it's always good to see you. Uh, it's it's uh, I absolutely love playing up there. I don't play up there often enough. I've, Edinburgh and uh, um, my, the, the time I did with Journey, it's it's so, it's so far and few that I get a chance to get up there, and I'm just I, I absolutely love getting up to Scotland. Nice one. Oh yeah, you, you'll always be welcome, fella. Um, I was uh, so that was with Soto the band. I, I yeah. guess the, the, of your recent releases. Um, so back in November, it was uh, it was wide awake in my my dreamland. Great, great album, and uh, yeah, I think you said at the time it was you'd, you'd had to basically turn a lot of it over to uh, that other hardworking guy, Alessandro <laughs> Del Vecchio. Um, yeah, I don't like Ale Alessandro these days because he's trying to outdo me as the most, the hardest working guy in the business. I don't like that. He's trying yeah. to take the title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, that came out great. Um, I, I, How's it gone down? And, and I'm interested in this. There, is there certain parts of the world where you're known for your solo stuff, or from Soto, or, or from Sons? Does it? What, what territories do, are, are your prime ones? Overall, it's uh, it, it's it's certainly Europe. It strangely enough, um, well, not strangely, but it maybe ironic or maybe coincidental because I am of Spanish origin. Uh, it seems like Spain. And even uh, in South America are my, if, if when it comes to Europe, Spain and maybe Portugal and South America are my strongest audiences. I don't know if that's, uh, that, that's because of my Spanish origins or it just my music seems to connect mostly to the, those territories. But right. um, my biggest audiences, especially with Soto or JSS, are certainly down in Spain. And, uh, and like I say, when I go to Brazil or Argentina or Chile, stuff like that, it's it, they're manic. It's it's the most I draw on is in terms of attendance and capacity. But it's also they're crazy. They're just crazy fans, and they know all my music. They know all the decades of of debauchery that I've released through the years. <laughs> and it's yeah. fantastic. It's it seems I have a lot of that also in the UK, which is great. I I, I built such a great following in the UK, especially living there for uh, a, a few years back in the. Uh, uh, I, I guess the the end of the the, the 2010s or the, I'm sorry the end of the, t the beginning of the 2000s. Right. I literally moved back to uh, Los Angeles in 2012, but uh, being there, I, I had a little more exposure and a little more. I was a little more in tune with what was going on in the UK scene. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I I certainly have a good presence there as well, which is fantastic. Yeah, great stuff, great stuff, and and the album's doing well, yeah. Uh, so I hear, I, I mean, we, it's the first time I've ever charted as a solo artist, uh, as far as the, uh, the solo album, it's the first time I charted as a solo artist in the U.S. Billboard chart, so that yeah. was uh, exciting, and it, it's exciting, but, but on, the, on the other hand, it's a bit of a piss take, because when you think of what sales used to be, what physical sales used to be, what they actually meant, you don't really have to sell much this day and age to, to chart, it seems, mm -hmm. but still, it, I'll, I'll take the... I'll take the glory that comes behind it because it's uh, it's it's nice to see your name in in, in that kind of marquee level in, in terms of sales and interest and the fact that after 37 years people are still interested in what I'm doing. Nice, nice. Yeah. And then what a pinnacle with uh, with, with Wet. I, I wasn't sure we were gonna gonna get another album, and then there there it was. But a lot of excitement about. Uh, about that and uh, yeah. in the review I was kind of posing the question you know it's like Europe's where it's at most yeah. of the the massive bands aren't recording anymore it's the uh, it's all set for wet and, and, and bands to be top of the tree well it's 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 a fantastic position to be in of course uh it's 
It's uh, I wish I had a little more attention. I had the, the same attention that I get with wet for some of my other items, because as most people know, wet is it's more of a studio uh, outing. It's it's not necessarily a real band in terms of we're touring and we're we're hanging and we're, we're being a band. It, it, we truly just come together when it's time to make a new record. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. The only problem is I would love to get some of that attention for the stuff that I am going out there and touring with and I'm following up with. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's par for the course. I I have a it's a it's a very interesting career, to say the least, in terms of I've got interests from all over the world in different genres and different levels. So I'd rather have that than just one small pocket of and window of success. I, I, I love having the different levels and attention from the prog world, from the melodic rock world, from the heavy metal world. It's it's great to have kind of little little bits and pockets all over through all those different genres. Yeah, yeah. And so many people are, you know, it's kind of rare to find somebody that's just in one band. Just It's just so hard for people to, uh, you know, to to make a living. But, uh, yeah. you know, you've got your reputation. I, I think you're uh, you're one of these guys that um, people would want to listen if you were singing the menu from the, the Chinese uh, restaurant, you know. But, uh, I appreciate that. And you know what? I did get slammed a lot in the early days of my career. I mean, not early days. I'm going to say right around the, uh, the early 90s onward, I was pretty much i wasn't very stable in terms of where i was musically i was i was doing a lot of things from max of rudy pell to talisman to uh I, I think my first solo record um i had a band called slam I, I was pretty much all over the map in terms of doing different things musically but the problem with that especially back in those days i would get criticized and people would say if, if jeff would just choose one place to call home he might have a little more um, I guess notoriety overall, and I looked at it as I I just didn't want to be stifled in the one musical genre. I wanted to be able to get be as creative as I possibly could be allowed to, mm -hmm. and it gave me the opportunity to add so much more substance to to what I bring to the table. Because if I just did one thing and didn't really venture off into doing all the things that I loved, I wouldn't be able to bring all those different elements to the things that I was working on and working with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, but and you, you get involved in you know quality stuff. So uh, yeah, like, like everybody's always, uh, you know, some people just negative, you know. But uh, no, you're you're involved in quality stuff. You got to. Um, I, I, understand, I understand. I understood what they were getting at. I understood what they were what they meant by it because, of course, uh, they were equating it to say, for instance, if Jeff just was in one band, if it was just like if he found his Metallica in terms of. Those guys never ventured off. They didn't make solo records. They didn't uh, do super groups and do other things. And I'm talking what back in the day. Now, now as you said, it's commonplace. It's a, it's everywhere you look. But back then, it wasn't so common. And they kind of they kind of dubbed me the musical whore in terms of <laughs> I was just jumping around from from uh, band to band and project to project. And again, that had a lot to do with the fact that I just couldn't be satisfied with one band. If if one band didn't cater to the the uh, different genres and elements and and influences that I really wanted to get out of me, I was ha I was ha having to find it elsewhere, and vice versa. I get into a another thing that's more along the lines of like Motown funk and R and B, and say, oh man, you guys don't do metal. Okay, I got to go do metal now. I I got to fulfill all these things that make me tick. Yeah, but you know, and it's but you always put your stamp on it, and it always sounds like you. It's like so. I, I mean, I read at the time with the way that obviously it was. Uh, it was kind of down to Eric to, to to write, but you know, there's it's clearly a Jeff Jeff vocal, you know, and it's like um, big boys don't cry. Just had that kind of talisman yeah. groove, and then got to be about love. Just the the phrasing and the right. and the feel. Just, just I'm glad you're saying that. It's, it's, and I'll bring that up in terms of um, I believe on the Japanese bonus track for uh, on the latest Wet album. There's a demo version of Eric singing the Big Boys Don't Cry. He's because he wrote the song, so clearly he demoed it for me to to learn the you know to have as a as a guideline as a basis to to sing my version of. But on that version, you get to truly hear the difference between me singing his melodies, singing his lyrics, but how I actually approach them compared to that how he approached them, how he sings them, uh, and how he thought them up. And I love that that kind of black and white imagery that you get from the two because I'm not verbatim doing exactly what he's doing, just saying, okay, this is his version, I'm just going to copy it. 
you get to hear and, and this was uh, very apparent in uh, for for instance on queen songs that were penned by brian or roger that freddie was singing you could hear if you heard the original versions they they would be so black and white compared to uh freddie's final version of them you hear my god i i don't i don't know how freddie was able to make those songs sound like he wrote them because when he put his stamp on them they were just done his way mm, yeah you bet you bet uh, yeah I, i'm one of the lucky few people that has actually seen uh, seen wet live i think you, you were all performing at firefest one year yeah and put it together it was great and obviously you got the live uh, dvd uh, oh, cd yeah. so it went, when you can get together it's great but uh, yeah i appreciate the difficulties involved because everybody's got their own uh, own careers but maybe one day yeah well it's it wet is a difficult one to, and I, i've said it many a time i i'm not uh i'm not going to sugarcoat it on why we don't tour i'm not going to come up with the the typical um uh, excuses or oh we're just too busy or it's, we, it's impossible to find the time the bottom line the reason why wet doesn't tour and we've been offered many is i i honestly say i cannot sing that stuff live multiple nights if i had to do multiple nights like two three shows in a row on a tour for wet material i uh, you'd send me home in a body bag it's yeah. that's, uh, th that material is easier easier to do in the studio when you've got the luxury of punching you know lines in or fixing things and fixing pitch but when you're on stage and you got the spontaneity of having to pull that stuff off live i don't have the arsenal anymore I, i'm not a 27 year old singer i'm 55 now and I just don't think I could pull that stuff off nightly on an actual tour. So that's one of the main reasons. I'll, I'll put it straight out there. I, I'm, I have no reservation or hesitation to say I just couldn't pull it off. And, and I would rather not have to resort to using backing tapes or, or tuning down just to, to, to uh, make the songs more comfortable to sing live, et cetera. If I can't do them the way they sound on the record, I don't want to do them at all. And that's one of the main reasons why we're not touring. Sure, hey, but you know the good thing is you're you're, you're self-aware and you're doing what's what's right for you. I, mean, I won't name any names or anything, but you know there's some people that I've loved in the past, and it's, it's kind of painful. To, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 I won't name names, but there are some singers that tour still today that should not be touring. It's it, it doesn't. It sounds like a fragment of what they used to be, and it's not fair to the audience to to be. I don't want to say cheated because I understand that it's more the excitement of hearing the songs and seeing that artist live. But it, it, if it sounds so horrendously different and, and uh, if it's so different from the original versions you're used to and you're the audience is singing the songs half half of the time, to me, that's it's kind of like, what are you doing? It, it's just stop. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, admire, I admire singers or I admire artists who do exactly that, who are just transparent in saying, I would love to do it. I would love to do more or love to do it in general, but I just can't anymore because that at least you're being honest and you're, you're telling them the true reasons as opposed to trying to find excuses as to why, oh, I'm not doing it because I'm not interested. Well, I think <laughs> you can see right through those. Yeah, sure. And then uh, you've been doing these kind of guest uh, appearances. <laughs> it was like you did a, a song with, uh, with, with Jason Beeler. It was like a really interesting album. <laughs> yeah. And, well, Jason's uh, been, he's been very interesting to say the least uh, since, even since Saigon Kick. He's never really uh, conformed or resorted to the norm, so to speak. So I, it would, I, I wouldn't expect anything less from this, this recent solo record, which I think is absolutely brilliant. I, I, I remember him sending me songs when they were at the demo stage and asking me if I thought it was a little too left field, a little too out there. And I said, bro there's no such thing as that with you you need to you need to go outside the box because if you don't it, it's going to sound like you're jumping the shark and selling out so what, every time he would send me the strangest songs or even the the, the latest one uh, that he released it with a video of uh, some animated video i i loved it even at the infancy stages because he's just so unique as a writer and as a as a as a creator of music mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and then just literally a few days ago um that the joel with a whole i don't know if i'll say it right the joel hoekstra album 
You um, said it exactly. Do you think right. you're on all the way? <laughs> I'm uh, sure that you're on all the way through. Our Dutch ancestors say the name, but I, I'm, that's how we say it here in the U.S. and that's how he says it. <laughs> good, good. Didn't mangle it too much with my Scottish yeah. accent. <laughs> that's good. That's good. So you're uh, you're relegated to backing vocals on that, but uh, what a great album. Oh yeah, and and I did the same for his first album. It was only that. Uh, Russell Allen was not available to to finish it off because that was supposed to be the uh, the way we did the first album. It was only supposed to have one singer, and something happened along the way where Russ couldn't finish the other the, the second half of the record, and that's why Joel brought me on to to basically have two singers on that record. But this time around, he wanted to keep it more bound, band oriented sounding, and and you can't really do that when you have two singers on it. And fr from that angle, he he went back to the original ideal of just having Russell sing, I knock out all the background so that it has that, it has that kind of uh, continual, I'm sorry, um, I'm trying to think of the word. It, just, it sounds, it sounds consistent. He wanted that consistency and you can only get that by having one singer and having the background sound a certain way and having, uh, you know, kind of everything within a, a band formula. And that's exactly what we did. And I, I love it because I, I, he let me be me. He sends me the songs. Joel would send me the songs. He wouldn't even tell me, yeah, if you could do this and sing on this part. He just said, sing where you where you hear it. Sing what you want to hear, what you feel and what you hear. And and I'll, I'll weigh it out from there. And he basically used everything that I did on those, on those songs. Nice. It's a really classy album. You, you've been yeah. a good friend to him there. You did a, you did well by him. It's great. Oh, yeah, yeah. Joel, Joel and I have, uh, I, he's one of my, He's one of my dear friends, but also one of my uh, one of my greatest, uh, I, I guess, uh, collaborate collaborators because we've done stuff together. We've I've done stuff for him. He's done stuff for me, and it's just fantastic to be in in association with Joel Hoekstra. Mm, nice one, nice one. And then looking forward, are you you just announced a, a gig recently for for April with Bumblefoot. Are you are you quite hopeful? So far, yes. I mean, from what I gather, they're already doing shows. They, I, I see shows booked and things happening at this venue as of this month already. So they're, mm -hmm. th this venue's already booked out and they've, they've got things already uh, on their, their roster that they're pulling off. And as long as the, uh, the direction of where everybody's going is in the U.S. continues as we are, I don't see any reason why it won't. I, I think shows will start coming back. I think individual shows and in certain venues, certain territories will start coming back slowly. It's the actual tours that I don't think will will be happening until 2022, where you're actually going on the road, where you're actually doing a, a full thing where it requires you to be around people 24 seven. Those are the kinds of things I think are not gonna return till 2022. But mm -hmm. I think actual like one-offs and shows and things like I'm doing with Bumblefoot, I think that's going to start returning slowly and surely. Ah, okay, it's good to know. I've I've got flights booked for uh, cancelable flights booked for uh, for Denver for August. Um, wow. And I, and I, I want to go, but when, when I come to the states, I always want to go to lots of sport and some music. And uh, you know, if it's not going to happen, I think I'll probably push it back like i'd really yeah. like to see a gig at like red rocks i don't know if you've ever played there oh god I, I played there with with journey it's one of my favorite venues of all time it's one of my favorite venues but it's also one of the hardest to sing at because the altitude is just ridiculous up there to be there is breathtaking to be part of it is, is fantastic to go on stage and run around and do what you normally do and you're short of breath pretty much between between verses not even between songs it's it's one of the hardest gigs to actually pull off Right. Okay. Yeah, it's on my bucket list. So uh, yeah. yeah, I think I'll probably push my flights back and uh, go next year and hopefully yeah. Yeah, get get my fill. Cool. Yeah, what smart. what I else? Mean, that way you don't have to stress and you don't have to worry so much about it. Could it cancel? Could it be? Yeah. yeah it's it. I think this is what uh, what's happening right now. And we were we're even discussing this with Sons of Apollo because we had a flurry of dates already rebooked four times in the. And South America's just canceled for April, and and we were supposed to be out in uh, in Europe in May, and I think that's not going to happen. So we're just discussing: should we just pull them all together, or should we just try to postpone and move them again till 2022? 
Mm, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Oh well, we'll see what happens. Listen, Jeff, I'm not going to not going to keep you. Just one last one last question. Sure. Um, what what's what's next for you? I mean, I'm kind of expecting you to have another ten albums out by the end of the year. But uh, what what you got planned? Well, to be honest with you, is it because Sons of Apollo is not recording because Wet's already released a new album, and I've just released a recent JSS album. I've got a few things in the pipeline that I can't quite discuss yet. Sure. Um, they are potential new band situations, but they also are, it's more so collaborations that I'm, I'm working on. And I don't want to give away too much in case nothing pans out with them or, um, or it might be a conflict of time and interest. So I'd rather dis when I'm going to talk about something, I want to be able to talk about it in full. I don't want to just put out the information and then months or years later, people go, whatever happened to that? I'd, I'd, I'd rather just be able to talk about and, and discuss things that, that are absolutely in the pipeline. But I've got three pending projects at the moment that I'm I'm literally, literally working on simultaneously. And I'm sure they're all going to come to fruition, but I'm, it's just too early to talk about. And it, it's not it's not replacing anything. It's it's basically uh, it's it's more bucket list items where I'm working with people like I. I absolutely admire and we're just coming up with something that uh that, that's that's happening for us that's working for us i'm also working on a new album that i i've, I've found uh, another interesting niche to jump into uh that i'm working with frontiers records and this is more along the, uh, along the lines of jss and uh, i'm working on that now currently too but again it the ink's not dried on the on the contract so i'm not quite yet ready to talk about it so yeah. i've got four things in the pipeline that i'm literally it, it, this, this is what i'm what i'm talking this is one of the reasons why we uh my, we got interrupted on friday i was i woke up to a, a world of things that i had to deal and sort and it it just my it clustered my mind so much that i forgot that we actually had this interview booked so uh, I, i've well, got a lot of stuff going on and a lot of every, pretty much every single thing i'm doing people are going to be excited they're going to be they're going to be interested to hear it's it's not something uh, i'm not working on a, a country western polka um <laughs> you know, collaboration in spanish it's it's something yeah. it's all the everything i'm doing right now people are just going to be wow this is awesome Sounds good. That's that's whetted my appetite. That sounds uh, that sounds good. I look forward to, to hearing all about it when the uh, when the time is right. But Absolutely. Uh, do, do you I need to take a rest to sometime? I can't wait to discuss them all, to be honest with you. But again, it's got to be the right time. Yeah, no worries. Listen, thank you very much, Jay. Appreciate, I'm glad you managed to, uh, to to get the time for us. Really appreciate it. That's, uh, that, that's great. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll look forward to. Uh, to all these uh, new new projects, that'll be fantastic. Um, Cheers, man. You, you take care up there, and.